What's up guys, welcome back to another cycling YouTube video. Today, I'm not the one giving you tips. It will be my friend Vincent, who's an ultra cyclist from Quebec. He's been doing that for a few years and he has a lot to say and good knowledge to share. Let's find out. Hi, what's up Vince? Hello, hello. How's it going? Uh, very good. Uh, well. You know, since my surgery, I've been on the trainer indoors, sadly, uh, since uh, July. Should be getting better next week. So a lot of people are wondering, first of all, who are you, what do you do in life, and uh, why your cycling is so impressive? So I'm an ultra cyclist. So ultra cycling is any race above 250 Ks within 24 hours. I do uh, races of 1,000 kilometers, 800, 340 within one day. 1,000 Ks is like a weekend, and it's uh, a lot of elevation gain, so it's like 8,000, 10,000 meters. So it's kind of everything on a very long distance. That's really amazing. And can you run through us through uh, your career highlights? So your top three events that you've done in the past years that you're really proud and you should share with the people out there. It all started with my Cross Canada Trek in 2018. It was an amazing season. I did a lot of podiums in the ultra cycling community. Especially I won uh, the Ultra Defi, which is the 1000K race here in Quebec. It was a huge uh, success that, that year. So the, the Cross Canada Trek, I, I did uh, like 200 Ks, at least 2000 meters of elevation per day for about three, 30 something days. Whoa. So yeah. That's a lot. You should, uh, you should bring one gear down. You have a hard time to, uh, to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> You're going up on two? Yeah, it's uh, about two now. Also the Defi Debate Air, which is the 300 K race within 24 hours. Quite good performance this year, up to my expectations. I had the good opponents. Gemi Fagnan, which is... He's a legend, local legend here. Local in, uh, legend in, in, in Quebec, Montreal. in Montreal. The, this guy rides over 20,000 kilometers a year. He commutes every day, like 50K to go in the morning to work, 50K even, back even home. during the winter. Even during, during the winter. Yeah, and our winter here are... So, so uh, he's, a, he's a tough guy. He finished first, I finished second, so it was a... A good performance. Now Vince, can you give our viewers five tips for um, either getting into ultra cycling, what do you need to know about ultra cycling, any nutrition tips, uh, training tips, run me through your uh, portfolio of good knowledge to share with everyone. So tip number one, but at least to get into ultra cycling, you need to know yourself. You can start from any point, but if you start with like your maximum is 100K, you need to push at least 150 to 100K within the season to get at least to the race to do the 250, 300. So from there you need to train, say you have a month, you have to be really well prepared and to increase at least your, your climbing skills, especially because ultra racing normally has a lot of hills, a lot of elevation gain. You really need to push big gears going uphill. Tip number two, while you're on the bike, you need to eat at least every hour. A nag bar. What is a nag bar? A nag bar is a cricket powder energy bar. Also, so you need to eat at least every hour, either an energy bar, energy gel. You drink uh, at least one liter of water every hour. Either you have external support or you need to put everything you need on the bike. And uh, for nutrition, do you eat a full meal at some point? Like a 200K mark, you eat a full meal. You cannot just eat energy bars for 10 hours, right? Uh, well said, Shal. Indeed, you need to eat like a sandwich, something that you know you'll digest very quickly, then it's not heavy on your stomach because otherwise you will burn more energy burning your food than actually using the energy. You need to play with tactics when you want to eat during the race because if you eat too late, you won't be able to use this energy during the race. The race will be over. Got so it. it needs to be midpoint somewhere when you feel like you're really hungry for something more consistent because uh, indeed you cannot survive on energy bars uh, <laughs> for 10 hours. Electrolytes in your drinks, oh, every, every two bottles electrolytes, otherwise you, uh, you'll die dehydrated. Tip number three, also related to nutrition, uh, before the race you need to cut alcohol as much as you can. So what I do... Really? That's so sad. <laughs> it's sad, but you drink after. Okay, got you it. You drink after it. the race to celebrate. I would say two weeks at least for 
small races, like one day races, uh, bigger races like a weekend race would be about a month to really make sure that your system recovers well while you sleep, your kidneys are going well, and, uh, all, your whole system will benefit from this. Also, you, you lose weight and weight is important during an ultra race. Tip number four. <laughs> For your training, you need some climbs to build up your, your strength on very long climbs, so very steep climbs at least. I would aim for 15% and above just to, to practice these really steep climbs so you don't have to walk. It builds up power and uh, another good alternative to build up power would be like going on, on the track, doing some sprint intervals on the trainer or outside, pushing in group rides with strong guys. I find it really interesting because you're training for those really, really long distance, but you also need power because if you don't have that power, you're gonna get dropped, right? Yeah, you're, you're going to get dropped right at the start. It starts always like full gas for the first two or three K and then it slow downs a little bit. And it's really mental. You need to be stronger mentally than the other opponents because these guys, they'll try to get you down, to drop you from their wheel. So you really need to push the, the 600 watts for the first five minutes keep their wheel once you're on on the coast mode then you're fine but you you need to push some serious watts once in a while but also long steady power from what my perspective is like so you ride by yourself a lot but then when you get to those races there's a peloton so if you're not used to be in a peloton you're gonna it's gonna be really harder for your mental you're gonna be a lot more on the brakes wasting energy uh, is that something you had any trouble with when you start uh, ultra cycling or you were used with uh, uh, Delton right I actually uh, started racing with the FQSC, so our, uh, Track uh, our, our cycling federation in Quebec. So I was used to, to ride within the, the peloton. Okay. Yeah, so I was used to group rides, really tough guys pushing big watts would be to, to start racing with smaller races before you race the yeah. ultra cycling races. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they, they see it as a challenge, but then they don't finish it because they're not used to the race pace. Tip number five, you need to know your opponent. I know Remy from other races, I know his style. So normally when I know he's going to push hard, either I need to be prepared to push hard, or I just let him go and see how it goes for my, and I do my own race. Otherwise, if you push too hard, you burn yourself, and then you won't be able to catch up and you'll lose some position. So if you were second, you tried to catch up the first, you might actually end up third, third yeah, because you pushed it, too hard. You went out of your uh, your zone and then uh, you bunk and then someone behind you pass you. Yeah, yeah. so that's, so that's the, racing strategy. Also in ultra racing, especially for the weekend races, you need to know the position of your opponents. If you're first, you don't actually know the, per, the how long you have in front of the second position. But if you're second, you know that you may have 30 minutes behind the first position. And then it's easier to catch up in the first position, especially if you know the weaknesses of your opponent. So if you know the guy is really good on the flat, but if there's a lot of elevation gain within the last, let's say, 100 to 200 K, and you have a 30 minute gap, the guy will fall back on the climbs and you'll climb much faster so you'll catch him up. I think a really good tip for for those of you uh, starting, you need to know your opponents. When you're new in the business, you don't actually know your opponents, <laughs> but that's part of the game. Can you give me one good strategy for someone who's attending his first ultra race? The only thing you can control is pretty much yourself, your training, how fit you are. The others will do the same. So it's a matter of just being prepared mentally, knowing what is your objective. Just be well prepared for any mechanical breakdown. You need to know how to fix your bike by yourself. If you have an issue with your derailleur, your shifting, you need to fix it because no one's gonna be there to help you. Either that or you have a spare bike. Or you have a spare bike. Or both, you know how to repair everything and you have a spare bike and a spare set of wheels. So tip number six, recovery. Recovery is very really important. You can always push 300 watts for so long. Recovery is really important to push this limit. Any mobility, uh, exercise, foam roller, tarragon, whatever you use to, to massage your muscles to uh, so you don't end up on the start line 
with two pieces of wood. <laughs> so you need some mobility to actually push these watts and also to keep your position on the bike. So if you're in the aero bars, you need to keep this aero position for a very long time. So this needs mobility. Lower back, flexibility. The lower back, lower uh, back. the arms. So if you have sore muscles, it will be difficult to gain extra watts. Recovery includes sleep, sleep very important. Eight hours of sleep, your body can recover well and your mantle can recover well because like I said, mantle is very important, otherwise you'll break down. What you eat will affect how well you recover. Eating junk food every day, not a, a good idea. Yep. Eating vegetables, uh, well, uh, eating rice, any kind of veggies, tomatoes, uh, zucchinis, whatever. And uh, a little bit of protein, plant-based protein or meat-based protein. If you can lower your meat-based protein, the better. Hi Vince, this was really, really good knowledge. Thank you for sharing with everyone. Now, what is your next event you are training to and looking forward to either at the end of 2020 or 2021? So, uh, the very interesting races uh, are first the Rift. So the Rift is in Iceland. It's a gravel race. So the landscape is amazing. You go through rivers on your bike. You see all these mountains around. 500k. But on gravel, it's... It's even harder. <laughs> it's even harder because you need to grind most of the time. Yeah, so. and sometimes gravel is uh, steeper parts too. Steeper parts also. And you need Slipping. to walk your bike. So there's the transcontinental race, which starts in Belgium. It's a uh, 4,000k race. But this one would be a really good uh, meter to evaluate my performance on the international level. A lot of racers from all around the world go to this race. You, you go from Belgium to either Turkey oh, or Greece. So it, <laughs> and you choose your path. So this is a really interesting race. And uh, Vince, where can people find you on the social media? So uh, I'm on Instagram, vincenzo.n88. Also on uh, Strava. Thank you, Vince. My pleasure. Have a good day. You too. All right, this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please leave a thumbs up. It's always really appreciated and it does make a difference for me to get noticed on YouTube. And subscribe if you aren't already. I have a lot more cycling content coming in the next few weeks that you don't want to miss out. Massive shout out to Vincent, the ultra cyclist, for sharing his really, really, really good knowledge with us today. He was super down for us to do this video collab, so please find his Instagram and Strava, send him some love on the social media, and he will be really happy. All right, my name is Charles, and I'll see you guys on the road or into the next video. Peace.